she is nowhere to be found. Where is Linda? I need a listing. I need to make money. One day I called this lead. Linda and she was in the nail salon getting her nails done very relaxed and chill and we had a great conversation I mean we really vibed and she even complimented me she said you know what I like talking to you you're different than other people that have been calling me today I want to stay in touch with you I'll be selling my house relisting it in four months let me give you my email address it was one of those magical conversations that we all hope for when we log on to the dialer every day. I'm like, fantastic. All my efforts this week have paid off. I've connected with Linda, and Linda's going to sell her house with me. Get her email address. She says to follow up in four months, but I know to cut that time in half, so I follow up with her in two months. I just send her a friendly text. You know, hey, Linda, it's Mandy. Remember we had such and such in common. Remember me? And I relay a funny story. I can't remember what it is at this point, but I don't hear anything. Okay, not a big deal. I decide to follow up in two weeks after that. Maybe with an email it was this time. No reply. Then I decide to call her as we get closer to the four month interval. No reply. She is opening up my newsletter, which is good to see, but I can't get her back on the phone. And we had this magical conversation. I mean, she actually complimented me, told me that I stood apart from the competition. Most assuredly, she's going to want to speak to me again to list her home for sale, right? Isn't that how it works? I did all the work, finally got to Linda, who's my little piece of gold as I'm mining through the data. And now she is nowhere to be found. Where is Linda? I need a listing. Have you ever felt that way? Because I have felt that way many times in my years of lead generating. It happens. The Lindas of the world disappear and we never know why. So where did they go? What is their reason for disappearing? Well, there are many different reasons and I'm going to let you kind of scroll through and take a look at a few of them with a very sad song in the background. <music> points I want to share with you that are super important. Number one, I do not have the luxury of worrying about where Linda is. I do not have the luxury of getting down and depressed. And you know why that is? Because time equals money. The more time I spend getting hung up and frustrated and upset and angry about Linda disappearing, the more time and energy I'm taking away from Robert or Jennifer or Jose other sellers that I could be connecting with, that I could be listing their properties for sale. The more focused I am on her, the more I'm going to hurt myself. And I literally don't have that luxury of time. Time equals money in sales. You have to pursue, but you also have to keep moving. Number two, the sales funnel. The sales funnel is just as it sounds. It's a big funnel. And this up at the top is all of the calls that we make day after day, week after week, month after month, the volume, right? And then it trickles down into people that we're getting closer and closer to actually doing business with. You have to keep this very full. That means you have to keep dialing. You have to keep moving. Volume equals victory. The more dials, the more conversations. The more conversations, the more appointments. The more appointments, the more listings. The more listings, the more sales. The more sales, the more money that you can put back into the business. So if this up here, up here at the top, the funnel, doesn't have a lot going on, there's not going to be a lot that's going to be trickling down here that you're actually transacting with. 
volume equals victory. Do never forget that sentence because it is super important to what we do. And when I'm having a down day or a down week, I remind myself, get back up on the dialer. Number three, sales is a tough game, guys. It's a, it's a mental game. It really, really is. Because we have to go into the listing appointment, or, or not even the listing appointment, the phone call with a lot of enthusiasm and passion for the Lindas of the world and show them how much we want to sell their property. We might actually get to the appointment and you know show them how much we like them, how much we believe in them, how we are so capable of doing the job. So when we do that, we wear our, we wear our uh, this is my real broker hat. We put this hat on, right? This is our real estate agent hat. We are passionate. We want the business. But then we also have to wear this hat. This is I don't care hat. I don't care. I have to be disconnected from the outcome because so many of these calls are not going to turn into money. We have to be all in. Yeah, I want to help you sell, but then we have to be all laid back. Eh, it's okay if I don't get that. I got to keep moving. So we got to wear two hats. I mean, it's really a mind game. How on earth do you do that when you need a listing, when you need a deal, when you need a client, when you need money? Like, how do you do that? Like, what is the strategy involved? You know how you protect yourself, how you protect your spirit and your mind? You keep moving. You keep prospecting. That's the only way. Because if you just stay stationary and focus on the people that don't get back to you, even though they say they're going to, you're going to be so unhappy, so frustrated, and you're going to leave the business. The only way to protect yourself is to keep moving. You've got to channel that energy because that energy is like bubbling up inside of you. I also recommend going out to the gym or for a run or a walk. That's, you know, exercise is always great, has many benefits. There are things that we can control in this business and there are things that we can't. The Lindas of the world, we can't control. Those reasons that I just showed you, we can't control those. The only thing that we can control is the effort that we're putting into building our business. Another important thing to keep in mind is that the people that we're calling, they did not ask to be called by us and all the other real estate agents that are calling them. We are inserting ourselves into their space, into their day when they didn't ask for it. So they can react however they want to and you know, we just have to deal with it. We made the call, they didn't call us. And if they don't want our services and they don't want to follow up and give us the courtesy of, you know, Mandy, I'm sorry, we've decided not to sell right now or we're going to be selling in two years, we're going to remodel the home now or whatever it is, that's not their fault. That's just the reality. They don't owe us anything. So we have to get very clear about that relationship that we have, which is really not a relationship. It's just a momentary conversation or as we attempt to connect with them to secure a business relationship to put money in our pocket. It doesn't always work out and, and that's what sales is. Personally, when I have somebody calling me and soliciting my business and we have a conversation and I'm thinking, yeah, you know, I think I might go with this company or this person sounds pretty good. And then I decide not to go with them and they circle back to, you know, get an answer. Okay, Mandy, what's the status? Are you going to hire us or not? I always give them the courtesy of a reply because I know they're out there hustling. And even before I was in sales, I would do the same thing because I'd like to think of myself as an empathetic person. I appreciate the hustle and I think they deserve to know whether or not they're going to get my business. Business. But I have to keep in mind that not everybody on this earth thinks like I do. Do you ever just give up on a lead? I would like to say no. The only time that I stop pursuing a lead is when I see that they are active with another agent. Then I am hands off because that is the rule and that's also the ethical thing to do. I will continue to follow up with them, but I will extend my interval of time. Like say for instance, I was following up with them once a month. I might bring that out to once every three months or once every six months or you know maybe once a year. I keep all my leads that I haven't connected with and then they go into like a bucket. January through March or you know April through June you know the quarters of the year and then I will either you know keep them on a newsletter if they give them either email address or I'll reach out to them every now and then because you know I, I'm a big fan of old data because old data can be gold data yeah it rhymes it really can be because they're not getting inundated with so many people like a fresh expired is and you really do find a lot of promising leads when you go back into the archives Remember, do not get upset about the leads that ghost you. And if you do get upset, just get upset for a short amount of time and then keep moving. That's going to serve you better in the long run. If you got video, 
if you uh, I'm gonna leave my blooper in there if you got value out of this video please leave me a thumbs up down below and I will see you guys on the next one